All right, guys, welcome back to another video in the fish room. Let's sort that exposure out and then we can get cracking. So today we've got fish to move into the 125 from this 40 gallon aquarium. If you're a long time subscriber or you watched the previous video, you will know that these geophagus tapos are the fish that are moving today. So I thought what better time to go over some hints and tips on moving aquarium fish from one tank to another. So let's go. So as I mentioned in the intro, these Geophagus Tapajos used to be in the 55 gallon South American Nature Aquarium, but I recently set up a new African Cichlid Show tank, so that's why they got moved. When I moved them, I moved the sand over, some of the decor over, and then of course the water, so they haven't gone through any changes with the recent tank move, and that was about three or four weeks ago at this point. It was always my intention to move them into the 125 gallon with the bigger cichlids. And after growing them out for around two or three months, today is that day. But obviously there's a few things that we've got to check on before we even begin to start that process. The first thing that you wanna check before you move fish from one tank to another is the water parameters and the temperature difference between the two tanks, if indeed there is one. For these two tanks, I tested the water parameters with aquarium co-op test strips. These are great because it gives you a nice little baseline of pH, chlorine levels, nitrite levels, nitrate levels. And then I tested the temperature in both aquariums with a basic thermometer. I run all my tanks in this fish room at 78 degrees. So a temperature difference here is not an issue and water parameters and the differences between them are also not an issue because I run the same source water, a good amount of driftwood in both tanks, and then of course the same sand which doesn't buffer the water at all. If in your situation these are different, you will want to acclimate the fish for longer than what I did, but because mine are very, very similar, if not the same, both water parameters and temperature, I can just simply catch the fish and transfer them straight over. The third thing you want to take note of when moving fish is actually catching them. As you can see here, I do use the double net method and this just helps to prevent me chasing the fish all over the tank. As you can see, this tank isn't necessarily the easiest to catch fish in either. I do have some driftwood toward the back and a sponge filter and some other pieces of decoration, but the double net method really does help and just prevents you from chasing that one fish around the tank for a long period of time with one net. This in turn helps with the stress of the move, meaning the fish will be more relaxed when they actually get to the new aquarium. Once the fish are then caught, you wanna make sure that you do not just let them drop to the top of the tank. This is definitely important when keeping African cichlids or South American cichlids, New World cichlids, and any fish really that's aggressive. The vast majority of hobbyists always feed at the top of the tank. The last thing you want is aggressive fish thinking that the fish you just added to the tank is food. So as you can see, I always take the net down with the fish in it and then release the fish to the mid to bottom level of the aquarium. If you can also put them near pieces of structure where they can potentially hide for a little bit until they get the bearings, I'm sure that would be most helpful too. Once the fish are in, especially in semi-aggressive or aggressive tanks again, you wanna make sure that the light's turned off. This is especially helpful in African cichlid tanks as when you are first adding new fish to those aquariums, the aggression can be pretty bad. I haven't noticed a massive issue with this South American aquarium, but just to err on the side of caution, turn the lights off, let the fish relax and get its bearings and get used to the new surroundings. And it also gives them more places to hide as there'll obviously be more shade and that kind of thing undercover and in certain areas of the tank where if the light was on, those areas of seclusion wouldn't necessarily be there. After that, or even during that initial period after you've first put the fish in, I always like to add two products. One of them is any source of beneficial bacteria. So 
In this video, I'm using Seachem Stability, but you could also use Fritz Stresszyme 7 or Dr. Tim's bacteria, anything of that nature, because you are obviously adding extra bio load to the aquarium now that you've just added fish. Another one that I like to add is API's Melafix. This just helps to relax the fish. It's got healing properties with the aloe vera, and it also helps to repair any damaged fins that they might get from other fish in the tank in the first few days while they acclimate to the new aquarium. So tip number eight is now feeding the fish. So in the first few days, two, three, four days, don't worry if you are feeding the tank and the fish doesn't necessarily eat or isn't showing the same appetite as before. As long as the aggression in here isn't too, too bad, they'll be just fine and I assure you they will start eating within the next few days. The last thing you want to do is pump loads and loads and loads of food into the tank to see if you can get the new fish to eat. The only thing this will do is just pollute the aquarium, meaning that your water quality will drop and this in the first initial stage is more important than the fish eating, in my opinion. Feed sparingly and eventually the fish will come out and start showing the same appetite as it previously showed in the other tank. Tip number nine is again a tip that applies to aggressive or semi-aggressive tanks and this is to add two, three, maybe four new fish at a time. This just helps with aggression dispersion and instead of one tank mate getting picked on, the aggression can be dispersed among the two, three or four that you've just added. This then helps to decrease the amount of chasing and fin nips and stress that the new fish are experiencing, meaning that they will acclimate and become comfortable in the new tank way quicker than what they would do if you just added one. Tip number 10 then links slightly into that. If you've just added one fish, you'll want to do this even more. If you've added three or four, you might be able to relax on it a little bit. But tip 10 is to closely monitor the fish or the fishers that you've added for probably the next one to two weeks pretty closely. So in this tank, now that I've moved the four redhead tapos, I'll probably come down to the fish room once every two to three hours throughout the day, just to make sure that everybody's fine. I might come down a little bit more often when I know the lights are on because the fish will be able to see each other a little better. If there's anyone who's really getting picked on, I might need to pick them out. If there's anyone who's the aggressor in the tank, I might need to put him in timeout for a little while. I highly doubt this will happen because the tapos are plenty big in this aquarium, but just a little note for you guys when you are moving fish that you might need to take note of this. So that's basically it guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. It's just basically 10 tips on, on moving fish and how to move them safely. So if you have enjoyed it, make sure you let me know in the comments, let me know what you do when you move fish into new aquariums and how you keep them safe, healthy, and hopefully thriving in the new aquarium. So we'll see you on the next one. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.